Okay, atoms that are not carbon and hydrogen involved in single bonds are called functional groups. Certain functional groups are more important than others. The more important the functional group, the lower the carbon number it must receive. Okay, so this is actually going to help you naming. Uh, it's going to make it easier because once we introduce some functional groups, there's not going to be any more guessing as to which end of a molecule is number one. All right, so... Alkenes are more important than halogens and alkyl branches. So let's have a look at this sample molecule. I'm going to circle all the functional groups. So Br is bromo. Each of the Cl's is chloro. All right, see how I'm not even worrying about the numbers yet? F is going to be fluoro. All right, this uh, CH2, CH3 business, this is going to be ethyl. All right, and this double bond here is an alkene. Now, I also forgot there's a uh, there's a methyl group on the carbon with the the fluorine. All right, so I'll we'll I'll, I'll circle it later for you. All right, but the alkene, remember, is named using the suffix ene. All right, so now how do I put this name together? And basically, where's carbon one? Well, in order to do this, I need the priority list. Okay, this you can copy down. Uh, you can have it for any assessment, that's no problem. So you can see that alkene is higher on the priority list, all right, higher being decreasing priority, so 9 is more important than 12 or 14 on that list. It means the alkene must get the lowest possible number. So that means I'm going to start numbering from the right hand side. That puts the alkene double bond between carbons 2 and 3. So to use the naming convention that I introduced to you, this would be hex-2-ene because there are six carbons in the main chain and the double bond occurs at carbon 2. Label all your branches. 6-bromo, six 6-dichloro. Six, six, we're going to have, uh, so there's the methyl group that I forgot about. All right, but then we're going to go 4-ethyl uh, would be the next one. And then we're going to say 5-fluoro. Right. And then it will be dash 5-methyl to get the alphabetical order down. All right, I'm just running out of a little bit of room here. All right, so we'll type this up nice and uh, clear for you. So 6-bromo, six 6-6-dichloro, six, six 4-ethyl, 5-fluoro, five 5-methyl, five hex-2-ene is the name of this thing. All right, you can I strongly encourage you to try it again. You know, have the functional group list out, that sort of thing in terms of priorities. All right, just see if you can put it together. Circle the functional groups, all the branches, so you know where they came from. Now let's draw one. All right, so let's draw 1188 tetrafluoroocta246 triene using both the condensed and line structures. So I've got the functional group list on the uh, on the screen there, but octatriene, so oct means eight carbons. All right, so let's make this carbon one. So carbons 1 and 8, each of them get two fluorines, right? Between carbon, at carbon 2, carbon 4, carbon 6, there are double bonds. Everything else is just hydrogens. So there's a hydrogen there, one there, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. That's my condensed structure finished. Turn it into a line structure. A fluorine at carbon 1, another fluorine at carbon 1, a fluorine at carbon 8, another fluorine at carbon 8, double bonds at carbons 2, 4, and 6, we're done.